The Sunday match returns with a trip to St Andrews. It's Birmingham City against Charlton Athletic. The kickoff's 2.55. Alan Kerbishley's young, gifted side is having a fine campaign. They enjoyed the festive season to the full. Today, Charlton chased their fourth successive away victory. We've already admired their quality on the Sunday match. Robson with the cross for deep run. As well as pushing towards the Premiership, Charlton have revealed their appetite for cup football. Wimbledon went in the Coca-Cola. Sheffield Wednesday were swept aside in the FA Cup. Don't call it an upset. We expected to beat them, said Charlton. Barry Fry's kept Birmingham hunting glory in all three major competitions. His transfer activities have given Steve Claridge 22 different striking partners in two years. It doesn't bother him or his attack-minded colleagues. Hill. That looks dangerous. Right on the far post. Heading out to Hunt. He's done pretty. Oh! Charlton have the advantage of a 3-1 win at the Valley back in scorching August. Kim Grant has another chance to strut his stuff today. Good afternoon. The first Sunday match of the year, and since our last programme, Derby County have opened up a clear lead at the top of the First Division. But that chasing pack is as congested as ever. It includes Crystal Palace, whose coach Ray Lewington is with us this afternoon. Ray, welcome. Shame about your home form. Well, it is, really, because our away form is quite spectacular. But um, if we could match the home form, even have an average home form, we'd be in amongst the, uh, the top pack there. Yeah, it's incredible, Ram. I mean, you've only won a couple at home. If we look at the table mm. and, and look at your, your situation, I mean, if you win your two games in hand there, there you are, you're down in 15th place, you're right up in the playoff positions. Yeah, I mean, you know, we have had a bad season. We've got to say, I mean, our home form is terrible. When you only win two matches at home, you know, there's something wrong. But... Uh, we're not far away, you know, if we, if we do win our games in hand, we could find ourselves in the playoff position. So, I think there are, like, us, like many sides in this division, still feel they've got, you know, a very You've got good time chance. to make it up. Yeah, without doubt. OK, Ray, thanks for the moment. Well, Sunderland and Norwich are also playing this afternoon. We'll have highlights after our game from St Andrews. Both Birmingham and Charlton could move up to second place if they win. Charlton in superb travelling form at the moment. We'll hear from Barry Fry in a moment. But the Charlton manager, Alan Kerbishley, there he is on the right with Barry Fry in the old tit for tat and Matt Lorenzo. Thanks very much, James. Both managers with me uh, at the moment. I'll start with you, Alan Kerbishley. You've got a lot in common, you two. Doing well in the cup and uh, doing well in the league. It, well, it, uh, it's a nice position to be in. I think Barry's doing better in the cups at the moment than us. Uh, I hope he stays in it <laughs> a little bit longer. But uh, no, we've, we've had a good start to the season and you know we find ourselves in the top three or four again, which we've done four times over the last five years. We know it's a long season. We've fallen away before. Uh, hopefully we've learnt some lessons and uh, let's hope we can stay there. All right, Barry. Uh, it, it is going great guns for you. Um, I presume you're going to win all three competitions. Never mind about me, mate. Never mind about me. With his resources, he should already have manager of the year. I'll tell you that because he's produced an unbelievable team out of a, a load of youngsters. And they're brilliant players in there and all credit to him. Brilliant. Thank you. But for you up here, it must be a terrific buzz because it wasn't the greatest of starts, was it? No, I didn't win a game for three months, but, uh, you know, they got a bit wobbly down here, but they're all right now. <laughs> I know he's not the only one to praise your skills as a manager. Um, have there been times this season when uh, there's come a call from outside? Who from? <laughs> I don't know who from. <laughs> as long as it ain't the FA at the moment. <laughs> on that one. No, I got I, you know, I took over on my own in the summer and uh, had a bit of pressure on me, obviously, and I'm just happy the way it's gone. But as I've said before, it's a long season, but I've got some young boys in there who just keep going. And I think we're in for a good game today. I saw, I saw Birmingham up at Norwich on Wednesday, they played ever so well, and I think that uh, if we both get our games going today, it'll be a good game for the cameras. All right, unfortunately we haven't got time, Alan, to hear what he thinks of the call from Castigate. It must be on its way. <laughs> uh, maybe we'll find out later on the day. Okay. I don't know about uh, the call from uh, Lancaster Gate, Ray, but I mean, Barry Fry there saying that Alan should already be manager of the year. I mean, he's done terrifically well, bearing in mind the resources he's got. Yes, I think he's done exceptionally well. I think he's thankful for a very good youth system. I think Charlton have done the things right. I think small clubs have really got to start saying, we've got to start producing our own kids. And Charlton have done that, and uh, that has helped 
Alan. Uh, having said that, he's still done incredibly well, and they're a very good side, and they're obviously very well coached. It's interesting what you say there about the youth system. I I'm hearing from the Midlands, Birmingham disbanding their youth system. Yeah, it's, it's a strange one, really, although you have got the two opposites, really. Charlton, you know, have not a lot of money, uh, like a lot of other clubs, and yet Birmingham seem to have money to burn. So perhaps, you know, that's the way they think they should go as, as a big club. I'm not so sure, by the way. Supporters of the Sunday match, yellow pages. Supporters of the Sunday match. And before we go to St Andrews, let's get a prediction from Ray. Who do you fancy, Ray? Well, I'm going to be very bold and go for Charlton. <laughs> I think they're one of the better sides in, in the division. As long as they handle the atmosphere, the young players, I think that uh, they've got a good chance of winning. Terrific. Let's go to St Andrews and join our commentators, Dave Bassett and first, Brian Moore. Well, good afternoon to you from St Andrews. It's certainly a bright and a very chilly afternoon here, but an afternoon too that's filled with wonderful prospects at this NC League encounter. Let me just give you the team news. Starting with Charlton, they field the side that beat Sheffield Wednesday in the Cup last Saturday. We're starting to play at home like we have been away, says their manager Alan Kirbishley. Paul Mortimer now established in the midfield alongside Lee Bowyer. And there's really been a bonus for them. The goals of Kim Grant up front, he's got four in his last five games. But it's a big test today for Charlton's good away record. Birmingham City, meanwhile, busy and profitable with their cup ties and the replays coming up, but it's a major league game for them today. Barry Fry has made changes from the side that drew their Coca-Cola Cup quarter-final at Norwich in midweek. David Priest returns to the midfield, and Gary Bull gets his first start up front. He replaces Kevin Francis in attack. Francis going down to the subs bench. In the midst of the photographers and the mascots, the referee today, Phil Richards, who comes from Preston. Delighted to have Dave Bassett alongside me. Dave, it really is quite a prospect, and uh, this is a great venue for it too, isn't it? Well, as we said before, the uh, stadium's excellent uh, here at Birmingham, and both these teams are doing very, very well. Uh, they're up there chasing Derby, and uh, obviously it's an important game. It's a, it's a cup tie. If one can win today, they will have a good psychological effect uh, in terms of the running. Yes, if Charlton win, they go second behind uh, Derby. If Birmingham win, they go third. There's Alan Kirbishley in the centre there. If Birmingham win, they go third behind Derby and Huddersfield, although Birmingham would go second if they get four goals here today. Charlton fans will be hoping that that certainly doesn't happen. But it's the quality of Charlton's football that's been uh, so very good these last few weeks in particular. Well, they look very promising early season, Brian, and uh, I think as the season has gone on, uh, Alan Kerbs has correctly assessed it, that his young players have grown and matured with each game, and uh, uh, I saw them at uh, Wolverhampton in the cup tie, the Coca-Cola, and they showed great composure when they went to ten men, and uh, beating Sheffield Wednesday will give them a good boost and make them feel that, uh, you know, they're playing as well and they can compete with Premier League sides, so they'll be coming here with full of confidence, and uh, of course, Birmingham have got an excellent home record as well, so something's got to crack well it'll be Birmingham City who get us underway the race is on then to catch Derby County at the top in 90 minutes that means so much as they look towards the golden sunlight of the Premiership the chase is on there that was a good piece of challenging there by Stuart Barmer he got in quickly just as uh, Bull looked as though he might be in a good scoring position but this is great play here again and was that a little trip? A penalty given! A penalty given! A penalty to Birmingham City. There's no doubt about it that Louis Donimo was just caught there. Just there. Yes, he's just run up free. He's just cut across the front, uh, he's done well, he's turned John Humphrey and attacked him, he's gone into the box, John Humphrey comes across him, it wasn't particularly intentional, but really the referee has no alternative but to give a penalty. Jonathan Hunt, who missed a penalty on Wednesday at Norwich, it's Shaw this time, and Birmingham City go into the lead 1-0. What a dramatic start. 
can see Jonathan Hunt comes up, he's got his eye on the ball, head down, gets it low and gives the keeper no chance there. But that's a great start for Birmingham. The, they took the game immediately to uh, Jolton and Louis Donner went straight at Humphrey. He didn't give him any chance and uh, they've got just the start they would love. And you're, you're happy with the penalty decision. He just, he just caught him, didn't he? That's correct. I, I think John Humphrey was trying to come across and uh, the referee had no alternative. It, it was a penalty, it was a trip. I mean, John Humphrey would be disappointed because Donald wasn't going to score from there. Although, having said that, there was one or two Birmingham players lining up ready for him to square the ball across. Well, a rough old time at the moment for John Humphrey. Barry Fry delighted with that. Jonathan Hunt penalty. And tough for John Humphrey. Uh, poor old John, who was sent off in the cup tie against Sheffield Wednesday last week. I mean, he's such a good pro, <laughs> and suddenly everything conspiring against him, the uh, chart now led number two. Well, certainly John Humphrey's not a violent player or a dirty player in any shape at all, and he's very experienced, and, uh, you know, sometimes with the rules as they are now, penalties and sending offs are, are more frequent. Well, it's a throw for Birmingham, really got their tails up now. Priest. Paul gets it back again to Paul, into Hunt. At that time, Jamie Stewart gets it away, none too convincingly. Frame getting it in now towards Claridge. Well, certainly Birmingham have been boosted by that, and, uh, you know, they're confident. Uh, they've moved the ball around very, very well, and uh, that wasn't far away from the header through to, to, to find Claridge. Up towards Leeburn now. And Charlton get a free kick. Charlton have won their last three away games. Lee Bowyer now with this free kick for them, floated in towards Lee Byrne, but Paul Sanson with the safe catch and the throw out now for Donova. He's gone past Sean Newton, but Newton's coming back at him. Took a little elbow in the back there too, did Newton, but the uh, goal kick given. Good defending by Newton, who's a quick player himself, and uh, Donoghue looked like he was going to get away in the first uh, 15 yards, but then Newton matched him stride for stride and uh, got himself in front. Good defending. I think that's one of the features of the Cholton team, that uh, young Robinson and Newton work so very hard on the wide positions. They get back and support the full-backs and help them out defending and then uh, give uh, Cholton the good options when they get forward. Mike Salmon with the kick. Up towards Lieburn, Lieburn winning it in the air. Got two enormous strikers here today. Lieburn, of course, who stands what, six foot three, six foot four, and on the substitutes bench for Birmingham City is Kevin Francis, who is six foot seven. Palmer again with a long ball with Lieburn chasing it, Daish getting it away. Reese turning and clearing it into a crowd. Some empty seats over there. But Birmingham got so many uh, important games coming up, and if the money is a little bit tight, then the people have to select the ones they want to choose to see. Sampson coming for this one, winning it quite comfortably. Paul Sampson on loan from uh, South End. Very popular keeper, once with Millwall before that. Just that one game he's had against Norwich in the Coca-Cola quarterfinals. Charlton's throw. Just got to put the first minute of that game behind them now and get back to knowing what they do well, and that is playing away from home with success. Shoving the back by Andy Edwards. Another former South End player. Plenty of those dotted around the Birmingham side. Lieben chasing. Birmingham's goal kick. 
I think Cholden will be wanting to try and hit back now, Brian, and uh, cancel out that goal. And uh, they've had that few minutes to settle. They've uh, overcome the disappointment of the penalty. And uh, they've got to now look to take the game to, to Birmingham and uh, exploit some opportunities to get that equaliser. Having said that, they've still got plenty of time. They don't want to put, commit too many players forward, so they get called on the break. Palmer. Deish. Goes Mortimer. Mortimer again. Free kick. Quality player, Mortimer. Had a good spell with Aston Villa in this part of the world. But has had a few problems with injuries at the start of this season, but now really there to establish himself as a central midfielder alongside Boyer. It's Palmer with the kick, though, for Charlton. Right again to the far side again. A good safe catch by uh, Paul Sansom. that Paul Sanson's in goal for uh, Birmingham on loan because Ian Bennett, the Birmingham uh, keepers, got a broken finger. Sean Newton up to uh, Lee Bowyer. Tim Grant in there. Bowyer's through, the flag is up. Not much in it, but that's enough. A free kick to Birmingham City. You see, the, the referee's right. It was quite close because the uh, fullback Gary Paul was uh, uh, very tight there. In actual fact, it was tighter than I thought it was. Uh, that might have actually been level. He's having a very good season, isn't he, Lee Bowyer? Yeah, he's a very good player. He's, he's, he's an exciting boy. Mortimer gets it away up towards Grant. Frayne getting it clear, the left back. <laughs> Donald with the throw. Priest. Get in towards Gary Ball. And Frayne shot easily saved by Mike Salmon. Up goes Leeburn. Got straight to Frayne. Good left foot on him, banging it straight back towards Richard Rufus. Oh, he has taken a, a knock in the back. Mortimer wanting to take that kick quickly. I think Mortimer was ready for it and nobody else was. I think Birmingham like to push both their full-backs on and uh, leave 2v2, so I think uh, Cholton will get their chances uh, when Birmingham are attacking them to get back at them fairly quickly as well. Birmingham City, Liam Daesh, the captain, Republic of Ireland International, for number six with it. Seven games actually, uh, Steve Claridge, without scoring. Ten this season. He's due one. It's 
It's always a test when a striker's gone without scoring for a while. You automatically think it's not going to be long, but you don't know whether they're in their mind that they're wondering where the next goal's coming from. That's right. And on that subject, I think I'm right in saying it's 12 matches since Carl Lieberman has scored. So he's certainly due one. Oh, my goodness, he just about got that in. <laughs> Smile from Mike Salmon, the relief. The referee was perfectly placed right on that line. Just nicked the ball inside before he touched it with his hands. Jamie Stewart hitting it long again towards Lieburn, trying a lot of high stuff towards Lieburn. That's not unusual. And that's a throw for Charlton. Youngsters, 19-year-old Jamie Stewart, number three. Punted well there, but couldn't keep in play. Something like five of this Charlton side on the field today are trainees, or at least came up through the uh, junior ranks of the Valley. Says so much for them. Now that was in play, it's all right, they never went out of play. Oh, yeah. Sanson gets it clear to John Humphrey. Mortimer. Say Barry Fry certainly has got this show on the road now, hasn't he? Uh, oh yeah, Barry's uh, been good for Birmingham, and they've been good for him as well. And uh, the club's done tremendously well in the last couple of years. And there's a buzz about the place, and uh, they're in all the tournaments still. So there's a lot to play for in the second half of the season. Hoping to get on the end of that one. Rufus denying him. Mortimer caught in possession. Free kick. And again, Mortimer taking it quickly. Grant. Bowyer won't get hold of it. Suddenly, Donova. Puts it straight at Barmer. Barmer bangs it away at the second of time. The big, rough Scotsman there. Up goes Lieburn. Here's Grant. Might even get a shot in here. Caught just as he was about to shoot by Richard Forsyth. When you talk about Barry Fry, it's almost like a thousand piece crossword. He's tried 36 players, you know, this season, uh, David. Yeah, Barry's amazing in this respect. He's probably the only manager in the country that has this amount of players and changes them around. And uh, they seem to accept it, the players. And he's, he's always done that, even at Barnet and everywhere he's been. He's always worked on lots of players, and it's worked very well for him. Oh, yeah, now. Knocking it wide for Sean Newton, another good youngster in this Chelsea side. Uh, Ch Charlton side, he's... Put that way behind for the goal kick. And that was a promising-looking break as well, led in the first place by Lee Bowyer. It's disappointing when you get in those wide positions. As you rightly say, Bowyer has collected the ball. He's played it out. A good ball to Newton, the first touch. And he's got to get a decent cross in. He'll be well disappointed. Armour oh, beaten in the air that time. Robinson. High again towards Kim Grant. Fouled by Richard Rufus. Free kick to Birmingham City. David Priest with it. Had about 11 seasons, did David, at uh, it's Daesh who's going to take it now. Priest with 11 seasons at Luton before he went to Derby County. And then coming here on a free. Birmingham thought that was a corner. A goal kick to Charlton. 
One's got to say that the two teams, Brian, that have come up, uh, Birmingham and Huddersfield, have both done very well. Huddersfield are in second place, and uh, uh, it shows the advantage of a team that can be on the roll. Birmingham got relegated and uh, were obviously disappointed and then sort of got themselves back straight away. And, uh, uh, you know, the, the whole place takes on a different perception. Grant finding Leeburn. Here's Robinson. Support here from Stewart. Ooh. Quick challenge though by Hunt, that was. And a nasty bouncing ball there for Barmer to deal with. The bounce went his way and Mortimer takes it up. That was a not a very pleasant challenge by David Priest. That's going to be a yellow card, I fancy. The referee's done quite well yeah. so far. I mean, that could have quite easily been a book in, but I think he's decided that yes. word's uh, sensible and I think that's an uh, excellent uh, decision. And he's done well throughout the whole game. Albeit it's still early. Towards Lieburn again. Newton almost got on the end of that. Bowyer trying to keep it going. Mortimer dinking it in there again. This is Gary Ball. Priest battling with Mortimer. That was a shove in the back. By Forsyth. He's a man who's come out of uh, non league football, played for Kidderminster Harriers, did the uh, Birmingham City number four. I think one or two of the play Cholton players are sort of complained that perhaps he should have been booked. And on that occasion, I think there was some justification because Mortimer was in front and. Uh, Presumably off uh, frame, but certainly it's gone in a ricochet off the Birmingham City player. Well, the referee had given the free kick here. Stuart Barmer puts it into that area. Lee Burns backing in, and the goalkeeper's elected to come with the centre half dash, I think it is. The ball hits the post, and it hits, uh, I think, Andy Edwards in, and goes yes, in. Yes, Andy Edwards, number five. It's an own goal, it's level for Charlton. One may say that the keeper may have been left it to Edwards and. Uh, uh, Lieburn to get on with the ball there, sorry, Daesh. And uh, a little bit of bad luck there has uh, hit the post, but good good play and uh, good advantage for Joel. Well, that's a remarkable turnaround, and it was a terrific piece of headwork by Carl Lieburn that set it up in the first place. It almost looked as though he hit him with his hand as well. I didn't notice that, Brian, but it, I think he was going there. I think he was sort of thought it was safe, and it's come off his body in some shape or form. But uh, they had little bits of luck you need on occasions. Absolutely. I mean, there wasn't a Charlton player in sight, was there? <laughs> there we got it again, don't we? Let's have a look again. It was Lee Burns more... causing problems yeah. there. The two defenders rightly going back to help out. It's hit the post, and it's sort of hit yes. him on the face, I think, yeah, isn't it? Did. it? I don't think Carl Lieburn can claim it. No, I'm sure he won't. <laughs> it might like to, yeah. <laughs> Garage again does really well there. And they've got it back again. No, no, disallowed. Disallowed. Forsyth was right in there, thought he'd got a second goal for Birmingham, but the referees disallowed it. And it stays at 1-1. This is good play, and uh, Claridge does very well, gets close to the line, digs the ball up to the fast pole excellently. And the referee, I think, must have given a free kick against Forsyth for a foul. But I don't see it there, do you? No, I don't. I think it's a fair challenge. Uh, John Humphrey's there. They're up. But, uh, no, I don't I don't see that as a foul, personally. But actually, there'd be some hey, question whether it went over the maybe line. Maybe it didn't cross the line. No, I don't think oh. it crossed the line. There was a, a bit of a let-off for Cholt there. Mortimer. And now Lieburn. Now Robinson. There's the cross coming in. Priest does well. Mortimer. Newton. Thank you. 
For this one as well. This Claridge. Hunt with a throw for Birmingham. This is new. Oh, he has made a good run. And Charlton get a corner. Bowyer does make good forceful runs uh, uh, from midfield and supports, and hence he's managed to get his 10 goals. It's just interesting, Birmingham haven't really got the ball out to Louis Donovan since that first minute where he could get it John Humphrey. The only other thing I thought of Brian, perhaps uh, Claridge, the ball was behind when he crossed it. No, I think that was OK. I mean, what I'm hearing is that it's, uh, it was probably for a push, push by, by uh, Forsyth. By Forsyth. We didn't think so, though, did we, at no. the time? That's Barmer. Stewart. Charlton beginning to get things together a bit here now, aren't they? Yes, they've got themselves back in, as I say, after that shock of the goal and the penalty. Lucas. They've gradually clawed their way back into the game and uh, they're making their presence felt. But here's Priest now. A break for Birmingham. Donovan away down that left-hand side. Newton's trying to get back with him and does so extremely well. So you get it out now to Frame. Here's his cross coming in. Salmon stood his ground very well. Got a good catch in and a good throw out to Robinson. Now the game really beginning to take off. to Robinson again spotting uh, Sean Newton away on that far side now let's see what sort of cross Newton can get in this time not good enough doesn't beat Liam Daish Humphrey there for Charlton Mortimer can't pick up Kim Grant Frayne gets it clear Priest and Jonathan Hunt over this free kick. Priest with it. Hit towards Andy Edwards on the far side. Up goes Claridge. A turn by Bull. My goodness, he turned quickly there, but he wasn't far away. That was a good effort by Gary Ball. The ball got headed back in. He turns quickly. And, uh, you know, that's a good striking shot. Salmon would have had no chance uh, had it been on target. At the moment, it's going from both ends. Both teams are determined to win it. Uh, neither seems to have decided that a draw would suit them. I mean, obviously, from Birmingham's point of view, that wouldn't be on the cards anyway. Daesh with a header. Rufus with one for Charlton. Mortimer with his. Newton knocking it forward. Grant. So too was Rufus. Or oh, Mortimer's given that away. 
Oh, and a nasty deflection there from that shot by Gary Poole. Just flicked off Jamie Stewart. We see the opportunity. Gary Ball uh, scored recently, and uh, he goes for a shot. And, uh, those we've seen those deflections going before. He scored just one goal this season, and that was the important one in the uh, FA Cup against Wolves. So yeah, got a good strike on him, but he's well off the mark with that one. Again, I think that's another instance where we've seen young Bowyer. He supports the front players very quickly. The ball's delivered forward from the back to the front, and uh, he's looking to play off of Kim Grant and uh, Carl Lieber. Edwards gets it clear. Ball chasing, the bounce beat him. Palmer makes the clearance for Charlton. Hunt. Ball. Hunt again. Ball with a little dummy. Gets it back from Claridge. Simple shot that time for uh, Mike Sowen. Again, that was good interplay between the Birmingham players and Ball does a little over, Claridge plays it off and uh, he finishes with the shot. That uh, Had the shot been up to the rest of the play, that would have been excellent. Robinson. Well, it's done well, but can he keep it in play? No, he can't. and beaten by him. Poole, Bowyer again. Took time to put it onto his chest to find Grant. Framed at the clearance, only as far as Humphrey. Grant on the far side. Ball ricochet finally off Kim Grant, so it'll be a Birmingham City throw. 1-1 the score then. It looks like Cholton are playing one or two longer balls down the channel today than I've seen them do before. Mortimer, Bowyer, they've clipped that ball into that space for Kim Grant to get a spin run behind the uh, uh, Birmingham defence. That may well be that the Birmingham defence are trying to hold a line and there's some space in behind. Foul by Barmer on Claridge. Frame. Claridge, Donova, Frame, it's good play, and Claridge beating the header well, but the direction was off, but it was a well-placed, a well-worked-out move a by Birmingham City. A good job Steve Claridge there, there's the crosses come in, he's got behind Rufus, and he's not marked, and uh, he'll be disappointed with the finish there. A glancing header would have caused more problems. It was a good cross in. And John Frayne playing a big part in that move. Bit of an oddity, really, with it. We think of all the comings and goings. He's the only player on the field who, in fact, was an apprentice at Birmingham. In all his footballing life here. He'd be getting a gold medal at the end. Well, I would think so. I think a gold medal after about two years here. We're moving around so quickly. In comes Humphrey. I think Birmingham are trying to get the ball out to Donner a little bit more because they're trying to sort of get a one-on-one -on -one with uh, John Humphrey before Newton can double up and uh, give him defensive cover. Too high for him. 
referee looking around to make sure nobody in the blue shirt's too close. Makes his clearance for Charlton. Up towards Kim Grant, chested down by him. But here at Birmingham again. David Fries. Picking out Gary Poole. Down the line to Claridge. Charlton's throw. Robinson hitting it forward. He's doing well at the moment. It's easy to have uh, held the game up there, but he kept it going, and he's kept it going well. Stewart with the clearance for the header for Charlton. Swift challenge again by uh, Jamie Stewart. Priest now spreading it wide to Donald on the far side. There's his header, but there's Rufus for Charlton. was a great howl from the crowd and uh, I know referees that might have been swayed by that but he looked at it nothing doing he said you can see it's, it's a good decision by the referee sometimes we give fouls uh, when they're unnecessary and as you rightly say Brian he's had a very good game he's contributed to the atmosphere of the game the game's nice and competitive there's one or two challenges uh, and the two teams up the top and I think he's helped that along Oh, the Charlton haven't won here since 1938-39. It's like a long, long way. They're probably thinking today would be a good day to start. Yeah, certainly would be. But actually, there's talk in the programme. It's a nice little line in the programme. In 1946, when they came here and played, Sam Bartram, that wonderful goalkeeper of Charlton's, actually ran the length of the field to take a penalty and missed it, <laughs> and had to get back quickly, and... Uh, to save a shot at the other end. They, uh, Charlton lost 1-0 that day, apparently. The crowd here at St Andrews, back in 1946, was 56,000. Amazing. It is astonishing. It's a good deal less than that today, but the ground has changed so much. Mortimer. Up to Grant. Mortimer again trying to get Bowyer through and uh, he wasn't far from it. That was very well read by uh, Paul Sanson. That was a typical Cholton good play uh, where it was up to the front man back and Bowyer's on his way and the supporting midfield player, uh, in this case Mortimer's, played a through ball and uh, the keepers had to scamper it away. Leeburn providing uh, Forsyth with that one. Hunt now in turn getting Poole on his way. Claridge is waiting in the box. So too is Gary Poole. Oh. And Gary Poole and Gary Poole. And in the end it's a goal kick. Again, that's good link-up play. Gary Poole gets his head up and uh, Claridge makes himself, or is it Poole in this instance, makes himself available to set him up for a shot. There's been some good build-up play. It's just been sometimes the final shot or cross has uh, been disappointed. Oh, 
Can Grant. He slipped Dish. Now Grant with a chance here. It's 2-1 Charlton. Well, he's having a great run at the moment. That's five in the last six for Kim Grant. He scored a cracker against uh, Sheffield Wednesday last week, and he keeps his head beautifully here. That's a perfect bit of striking there by Kim Grant, putting Charlton 2-1 up. Yes, he took his goal very well. It came from a goal kick, a flick on by uh, Lieburn, route one, basically. They should have dealt with it. He slipped there. But once he's through, Kim Grant, you fancy he's going to finish there. It's amazing how you can say with all your football sometimes and your passing and that sometimes a goal kick and a flick on and it's through can be quite simple. But at the end of the day, Dave, it still required a good piece of finishing by Kim Grant. I mean, they, they look so easy, those, but... It, you, once he went through, you fancied he was going to finish yeah. it. That's probably the difference with him scoring four goals in his last five games. That's right. Perhaps earlier in the season he wouldn't have taken that and uh, confidence is a great thing for players. Alan Kermsley will be delighted the way they've come back and uh, they're now going to ask questions of Birmingham. Mortimer, no, oh, he's lost it. Claridge trying to play it in for Hunt. There's Hunt's shot. That was a testing one. They used to call a snapshot. It turned a little bit as well away from uh, Mike Salmon. Didn't make it easy. Telling you about Charlton having won their last three away games. They were at Barnsley, Millwall and Grimsby. And Barry Fry knows that there's a real big battle on at the moment against a team that's got a good away record. When you think earlier in the season they had a 5-1 at Ipswich, Charlton and a 5-4 in the Coca-Cola at Wimbledon. Well, I think Alan's been saying that uh, the away form has been very, very good and their home form hasn't quite matched up to it. And uh, that's a, a good thing to have, a good away record, because your home form can improve immediately. Stewart playing it forward. Hunt gets it away, but not before a yellow card comes out. Jonathan Hunt. They have come back well, Charlton, haven't they? I mean, that's, that was a demoralising first minute to concede a penalty like that. Yeah, they've shown good character and belief in theirself and they have come back. But I must say that overall, the balance, I think a draw is a fair result at the moment because Birmingham have had one or two good opportunities itself. Well, as we come towards half-time now, Richard Rufus has gone to join uh, Carl Lieben up there. This might take a little bit of defending against. If Robinson can find the right free kick and he's floated a good one in. Birmingham at full strength. Lieben couldn't get his head to it though. And they get it out to Gary Ball. Played inside now for Steve Claridge. Look at Boyer getting back though. This time it's with Hunt. Newton got his foot in there, just held it up for a moment. But now he's beaten by Hunt. There's his shot. That's going to be a goal kick. I think the other good thing that Charlton have got at the moment, you know, if you talk to Alan Kirbishley, is he's got competition for places in most areas of the fields now. Well, that'd be good uh, for them because uh, Cholton over the years always haven't had the biggest squads, but with these youngsters coming through and if you've got players in the reserves that are pressing all the time, it's good for the team morale, basically. It keeps everybody on their toes thinking that uh, I want to be in a team. And when you're winning, that makes a hell of an advantage. People don't want to be out the side either. Newton. Here comes Priest now for Birmingham. Flag up for an offside against Kim Grant. Dace with a kick. Claridge. Sprawling around, holding players off, but he couldn't hold Rufus off then, but he's still got the ball back to Priest. Hunt. Palmer. 
giving Stewart a chance to pump it down the left-hand channel here, but out of play. I think young Rufus has got to be careful. He's making one or two very good challenges, and he's being aggressive, which is good, and uh, he's showing good character, but uh, one or two are just a little bit uh, awkward, and the referee might be inclined to give a free kick or, or possibly book him if he carries on. Mind you, he's marking arguably the most awkward guy in the game, isn't he, Steve Clary, who sprawls all over you the whole time. Yeah, they're having a good little battle between them. You know, they're pushing, and uh, Rufus is a tenacious character, and uh, uh, he's, you know, determined himself to, to win the ball. Now the other game, Claridge got there first that time, headed it for Gary Poole, knocked in now for Gary Bull, Poole forward, here goes Claridge, Mortimer trying to hold him up, plays it for Hunt, that came off Jamie Stewart, and it'll go for the corner, will it? No, it won't, still Claridge. Now it's a corner. left of the first half, Charlton leading 2-1, Birmingham now with this corner, taken by Gary Poole, Barmer getting it away, Hartley not back in again, and again Barmer getting there, doing a good job of work for Charlton at the back, with Phil Chappell out of the uh, central areas through injury, Barmer's come in and has done a good job there holding uh, things up, with the clearance. Offside against Grant again. Two minutes of the first half left. Going the wrong way. Oh, he is onside. The flag has stayed down. Robinson's in the middle. And Robson's. Oh, a wonderful goal. Oh, a wonderful goal for Charlton. Just that little bit of a question mark as to whether Bowyer was onside. Once that flag had stayed down, Robinson made a fantastic run. Here he is. He made a fantastic run. As we see, and, and Bowyer still. spotted him. Side. the flag stays down you can see now you look at Bo you're looking across there's the run of Robinson and a perfect ball in and a perfect finish for it and it's 3-1 Charlton Yes, there is an element that Bowyer may have been offside, but once that's uh, established, he wasn't. It's a great cross and an excellent finish by Robinson. Again, as I said earlier, uh, programme Brian, you know, Robinson and Newton do a lot of good work for Cholton, working up and down defensively, and, and Robinson showed there his ability when getting forward into the box. Once or twice, Birmingham have sort of tried to play offside today, yeah. and it's been a little bit suspect. And, and on that, it may well be that Bowyer is uh, very, very tight to, to know whether he was offside or not. My first feeling was he may have just been offside. Well, that's what Alan Kerbisley thought. That, I mean, that was a terrific bit of play. Good thinking by Bowyer, and excellent thinking and good finishing by Robinson. Well, that's an amazing turnaround from that penalty in the first minute of the game and here are Charlton again Mortimer, Bowyer Stewart and a time added on at the end of the first half now summing it up well I think Bolt, uh, Birmingham are a little bit unfortunate to be 3-1 down they got the start they wanted to and uh, were looking promising and uh, 
one's got to say that Cholton got themselves back. They didn't lose their composure due to that uh, early penalty decision. They clawed their way back into the game and uh, got their equaliser, and they've gone from strength to strength then, really. Uh, Birmingham have had one or two chances, and I think now, you know, they're really going to be tested in the second half. I think Barry will make substitutions. I think we'll see Kevin Francis come on, and we may well see all three knowing Barry. But uh, Cholton can be well pleased with their performance in the first half. They've shown resilience and good character and determination. Half-time whistle, that's exactly right, uh, David. They've shown great resilience. They could have gone under after that terrible blow in the first minute of the game and they conceded the penalty, but they came and they've competed well. And the quality, apart from the own goal, which was a bit of a freak, the quality of their goals has been absolutely superb. Half-time then here at St Andrews. It's Birmingham City 1, Charlton Athletic 3. 133. 1-3 will do fine, thank you very much indeed. A terrific performance that by Charlton Athletic. Just about the best first half we've had on the Sunday match. I think we have a lot to analyse. Ray Lewington, the Palace coach, is with us this afternoon. And we will be back in a couple of minutes' time. Yellow Pages, support... Yellow Pages, supporters of the Sunday match. Right, Charlton lead by three goals to one. This after conceding a penalty in the very first minute. Ray Lewington, you tipped them uh, before the game. Good first half performance. Very good. They've had their breaks, but they've taken advantage of them. Uh, one or two decisions that we'll have to look at. But, uh, you know, they've worked very hard. Uh, they've defended very well. And as, as I say, when they've had the chances, they've stuck them away. OK, the very first minute saw the first major incident. Now, debate about the penalty. I think it was fair the ball was not out when Don Donoma pulled it back in there. But what about Humphrey and Donoma here? Well, you tell your forwards to get across defenders uh, because this sort of thing will always happen. He doesn't intentionally uh, mean to hit him, but uh, he does clip him. And I, I, I agree with Dave Bassett. I think the referee has got to give a penalty there. Um, good play by Donoma gets across his man, uses his pace, gets himself into the box, and there, unfortunately, John clips him, but I don't think the referee has got uh, uh, any, any decision to make there. I think that it's definitely a penalty. OK, and Jonathan Hunt, who missed a penalty at Norwich in the week, uh, tucks that one away very effectively. All right, so you're one down at St Andrews, a very intimidating place uh, after a minute, and then, as we said, you, n you need a bit of luck, don't you, to, to get back into it, and, and Charlton certainly got that, what, 15 minutes later? Oh, without doubt. I mean, I, I think you need your breaks wh wh wherever you're playing. If you're playing against Birmingham, one nil down. This is really just a high kick into the middle. I think the, the, it's aimed for Lipburn just to flick on with the runners to get him behind. He gets more than he probably anticipates on it. The keeper has come half and half. And poor Edwards there has unfortunately put it in his own net. Yes, uh, he's, he's actually handled it in, hasn't he, yeah. if we look at it closely. But the keeper here has, has tried to do the right thing in coming. He's not quite got there. He's left all his defenders bare, the goal bare, and uh, that's the little bit of luck that you need. Right. I, I think at, at that stage, I mean, you were commenting that, that Birmingham were closing Charlton down so much that Charlton really couldn't get their passing game going. I think if you could play against a, a side like Charlton who like to pass the ball, you've got to close them down. I think if they start flowing, they're very hard to stop, and, and it was very evident in the first 10, 15 minutes that they were closing down very quickly mm. and, and, and very effectively as well. And we saw Kim Grant in our little montage at the start of the show. He scored against Birmingham St Andrews in the sunshine in August, and he took his chance pretty well here as well. Yes, again, as Dave said, a long ball through. Uh, flick on by Lebon again, and Dave Shear commits himself, goes for the ball, completely misjudges it. Uh, but there's still a lot of work to do here. These always look simple, but in fact they're very hard. Keeper does well, stands up as, quick, as, uh, as long as he can. But he keeps his head and slides it in. He, he took that very well. That's right. So Kim Grant on target at the Valley and at St Andrews this afternoon. But um, a couple of minutes to, to go to half-time. Now, first of all, I mean, this one did look a big break for Charlton. This one looks offside. I've got to say, this looks miles offside. Um, if, uh, the only thing that's in doubt is that we can't see if there's any covering defenders on the far side of the pitch. But certainly from the camera shot there, he's two or three yards in front of the last defender who appears to be the lad holding his, his, his arm up there. But again, still some work to do. Uh, they've got their break. Uh, terrific ball in. And that is a really good finish. And Charlton lead by three goals to one at half-time. Stand by.
for Barry Fry substitutions when we return for the second half. Yellow. Yellow Pages, supporters of the Sunday match. Hello once again in the other First Division match this afternoon. Norwich are a goal up at Sunderland. The scorer, Ashley Ward, on 12 minutes. Ray, before we go back for the second half, Birmingham can perhaps count themselves unlucky not to have taken a 2-1 lead when uh, the referee disallowed uh, uh, what looked like a good goal for a spot of pushing, didn't he? And uh, I think we felt that should have been allowed, that one. I think they're very unfortunate, Birmingham. I, I, I can't see nothing wrong with a goal whatsoever. Clarice does brilliantly here, gets to the byline. This is a great ball back. And the lad just jumps. He perhaps leans on 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 the for defender. For yeah. But uh, for me, there's nothing. There's nothing wrong with that. And watch it. That looks over the line. And nothing that's over the line. We've got another angle on it. Again, there's there, there's absolutely nothing wrong here. For me, that's uh, that's a goal. Right. Okay, and and just uh, very briefly, what now for Charlton? Well, I think they've got to be careful because uh, he'll sling a few substitutes on, as, as he always does. France is going to be on there now. They've got to stop the crosses into the box. Uh, this, I don't think this game is dead yet. I think there's some more action to come. I have to say I agree with you. The best uh, first half we've had on the Sunday match so far. Let's uh, cross to St Andrews. Les Reed, Charlton first team coach, is with Matt. Well, Les, I understand uh, the uh, Charlton dressing room is a pretty happy place to be at the moment. We're very pleased to come back from that early setback uh, and be 3-1 up at half-time, but we don't feel the game's over yet. And we also don't feel that we've played the way we can play. We've, we've gone 3-1 up, I think, by battling and working hard uh, and taking the game back to them. But as yet, we haven't settled down into our normal game plan. If we can do that second half, I think we'll score more goals, but, but more importantly than that, we'll, we'll hang on to what we've got. Controversy uh, towards the end of the match. They reckon they should have had a goal, but didn't. They reckon that your third wasn't. Yeah, I didn't see the uh, I didn't see uh, the the incident with the goal that was disallowed. The boys say the ball didn't even go over the line anyway, but uh, he'd blown before that. Um, we th if think that the, the offside decision was very tight. Uh, I'd like to see an action replay of it and see what the defender on this side was doing. But uh, we thought we were unjustly awarded a penalty against us, so I think that evened it up. We went up, not bad. Thanks not very bad. much, guys. Thanks, Matthew. So you're back here in the commentary box now with me, Brian Moore, with Dave Bassett alongside me. He thought it was an unjust penalty. Yeah, I, I disagree with that. I, I think it's a penalty situation where you can't afford to make challenges like John Humphrey did. I'm not saying it was particularly intentional, but uh, he's clipped his heels and uh, Louis Donald has gone over. And I think you're going to find, uh, you know, 99 referees out of 100 will give a penalty there. But these decisions happen, and uh, as I say, they got the rub of the green because there's a possibility that the third goal may have been offside. Uh, the way Bowyer looked, I think he thought he was offside, but uh, one's got to say once uh, that was uh, given to the play on, uh, Bowyer and Robinson finish well and there we get well, Barry making his three substitutions well, he doesn't do things by halves he's bringing on three subs now Gary Cooper the fullback Jason Bowen who'll play in the midfield and the six foot seven frame of Kevin Francis wearing the number 12 shirt will be playing up front the men who've gone off are John Frayne and played left back Jonathan Hunt who'd scored from that penalty in the first minute of the game and Steve Claridge have gone Charlton having a quick look around no substitutes that's not surprising must be delighted with that 3-1. And here's Kevin Francis. He's uh, only had ten starts this season, but he scored five goals. Came from Stockport County. Six foot seven of him. Away we go. And we were saying at half-time, we feel that the scoring hasn't finished yet, Dave. No, I think there's a goal or two left in this game. There might even be more. Uh, which way they're going to go, I'm not sure. It wouldn't be on me to think that Charlton could get a fourth goal because, as Les Reed has said, he thinks they can still score. But having said that, uh, Birmingham are going to go uh, for bus now. They're just going to sort of make sure that they get back into the game. If they get that second goal, then it could be a, a sort of grandstand finish. They've only lost two at home, Birmingham City, this season. One against Port Vale, who, of course, had a win at... Uh, Millwall yesterday and the other was against Derby County they were well and truly beaten here by Derby I saw that game 4-1 as as good a game as I've seen from it or as good a performance as I've seen from an Ensley first division side anywhere Derby County and that was really where they started their run to the top Francis when he get in the air but not very conclusively 
Jamie Stewart getting in first. Robinson, who scored the third Charlton goal on the far side. Francis. Rufus looks an absolute dwarf alongside him, doesn't he? Yes, alongside uh, Francis, he's a big lad. He's one of the biggest in the league. And uh, uh, when we played them at Stockport County last year, we had Justin Flo, six foot four, and he made him look uh, quite small. Palmer with the header clearance. Beaten by Newton. Forsyth. Donovan gone across to the uh, right hand side with Jason Bowen now on the left hand side. Pool. Donovan. Looking for something here to get back into this game, but clearance that time again by Sean Newton. I think Barry will be Barry Fry will be giving Birmingham instructions to get the crosses in to uh, Bull and uh, Francis to cause some problems there. to Mike Saron. Francis winning it in the air above Barmer. Once again back with Salmon. Temperatures dropping a little bit here in the Midlands. Getting really quite a chilly afternoon. This is Gary Cooper wearing number 13. Francis, there's Barmer. Barmer again. One or two of the Birmingham fans getting a little restless now. Stewart in there first. Leeburn. Into Bowie, almost took that into his stride. As it is, Birmingham can come away with it now. Daesh finding Cooper. Forward now for Francis. Rufus with him. That's a goal kick. Well, we see the ball clip forward there by Gary Cooper and uh, Francis uses his strength against Rufus and uh, is played down the side, uh, they're battling and he trips over himself and uh, he flicks it into touch. I don't think he thought it was a penalty even himself. Daesh with the clearance. Oh, the referee got, nearly got half volleyed there by Mortimer and he plays it on. And it's Forsyth, trying to get the ball into Francis, succeeding through Francis now for Bowen. There's a chance here, possibly. Charge down well. That was Stuart Farmer, did a terrific job at the back again there for Charlton. And now Newton. Grant just offside. Yeah, well, I think uh, Birmingham were a bit fortunate there because definitely Forsyth pulled uh, Mortimer's shirt. I think, actually, he thought it might have been the referees. <laughs> Rufus up well. Good backward header that time by Mortimer. Newton. 
Humphrey. Hit long towards Lieburn. Carl Lieburn again. Oh, the feet were a bit high there. Bowyer taking it on. And he's got Grant waiting in the middle for him. Charlton's corner. Again, Bowyer's made that forward run. He's linked up uh, the Daish and uh, Lieburn clashed. And uh, in fairness, Lieburn was a little bit upset in Tyler to be, but uh, Liam Daish wasn't uh, trying to decapitate him. It went high with the boot. Robinson with the corner. Farmer Rufus and Lieburn. Three big men to be aimed for there. Knocking it wide again for Robinson. Oh, he's tricked uh, Donoma very well there, trying to whip the cross in, get another corner for Charlton. Leading 3 1. Robinson, a long, long corner. Mortimer tries an overhead. Bowyer getting in there, but the whistle had gone, had it? Yes, a free kick to Birmingham City. Remember, if Charlton win this, they go second behind Derby County. And they have some home games then to come. I think it's one against West Brom and then one against Crystal Palace. Home Cup tie against Brentford. And I think I'm right in saying a rearranged home game against South End. Bowen. Francis on the far side. Uh, he won it as you'd expect him to, but the header was perfectly within the range of Mike Salmon. Boeing comes back, checks on his right foot, he hits the far post where he's expecting Francis to be. He gets up there, it could have done with being headed out towards the edge of the six-yard box. So with those home games to come at the end of them, Charlton might well feel that they're going to make a real big, strong bid for promotion. Well, that'll certainly be an important time for them, them home games. Uh, and uh, Alan Kirbishley and Les Reed will be hoping they can reproduce this away form at the Valley all the time. It's uh, surprising sometimes, some teams can find that they play well away from home and then they come back uh, to their home ground and they're not quite as confident the crowd get onto them and uh, uh, it's, it's not necessarily uh, an important factor but it becomes a psychological factor. Oh yeah. Grant chasing. kick but there's also got to be a great determination within the club hasn't there uh, David to hold on to these young players the Jamie Stewart's and the Richard Rufus's and the Lee Bowyer's and so on that will be the test for Sean the club Newton. that will be the test for the club uh, in the longer term whether they can keep hold of these players when perhaps they're tempted with one or two big transfer fees whether they're going to hold on to them offside against Lieburn it is always, always difficult for a club of Cholton size if you get a big club after one of your players. The players want to play in the Premier League, they want to move to the bigger clubs, uh, there's bigger uh, wages to be earned and uh, sometimes that uh, influences the whole situation. If the player actually starts to want to go, uh, there's very little the club can do about it. Nice back heel by Grant. Newton who's battled away so well, but it's a throw to Birmingham. Also, there's a, a pretty delicate balancing act that directors have to take as well because they've, they're back at the valley. There's obviously been a huge input of money there, building that, those new stands and so on. That has to be, all this has to be funded. That's correct, Brian. There's, uh, there's two sides to look at it because yeah. sometimes if the clubs, if the uh, uh, income, it, it, you know, goes beyond the, what uh, the clubs bring it in and uh, etc., then there's, there's got to be, the books have got to be balanced at some time. But at the moment, everything's looking good for Charlton, particularly here at St Andrews today, leading by three goals to one. Here's Forsyth. This is a good break. Burns made it. Ball's waiting in the middle for him. My word, so too is Jamie Stewart. Well, the 19-year-old fullback 
made a very timely intervention there. That was a good break, though. Bowen does really well here. Flips the little cross in. Jamie Stewart had read it to perfection. But a corner then for Birmingham. Obviously, big Kevin Francis will be a target for Priest to aim for. There he goes, and there's Francis going for it. And Rufus manfully holding him up. So Lieber now marking Francis. Didn't even get anywhere near Francis then. It was Mortimer with the clearance. Priest. And Bull keep that in, he can. And away come Charlton again. Newton. Terrific pace about him as well. But Daish has stayed with him. Oh, and he's gone past Daish. Priest got in just in time. And Sanson with the clearance. decision by the referee, 6 or one half dozen the other, Bull trying to keep it going it falls conveniently for Forsyth and now for Poole with Donald outside him then a good challenge by Stewart Donova well played Mortimer Reese guiding it back to Sanson. Reese. Again, Francis over at that far side just gets his head to it, but Stewart just clipping it away. Robinson there to help him out. Back to Jamie Stewart again, and then hit long towards big Carl Lieburn. Lieburn wins it in the air. Daesh now to uh, Cooper. Hit long again. Upside flag goes up against Kevin Francis. I don't think the crowd are too happy. I'm inclined to agree with them. I don't think Francis was offside. I think he responded to the uh, call by the Cholton players for offside and then uh, stuck his flag up. He might agree. I'm sure he does. He's looking for a goal at the moment. Kim Grant. Birmingham throw coming up to a quarter of an hour of the second half gone he's done well today hasn't he Jamie Stewart yes he's a good young player he's uh, along with Newton and Robinson I think those three have, and Bowyer those four have played very well the whole team's played well they've shown uh, good character to come back from that goal down early on they didn't let it affect them Okay. It seemed to me that it came off Bowen, I must say. Birmingham fans who were much closer to it didn't like the look of it. Farmer and Bowen having a little skirmish here just to see. Sen in the end, quite right. Goal kick. Poole, hit long, towards Francis, but Rufus there for Charlton. Newton. Free sitting it forward again. Kim Grant. If Birmingham were to get a second goal, my goodness, there would be a, a finale then, wouldn't there? Bull chasing this one, Stewart getting in, Mike Salmon coming across to bang it clear. A 
Played in by Cooper, knocked away by Barmer for Charlton. Lieber. And he's gone past Cooper. And his long legs stretching out. The ball flicked in to Lee Bowyer. Spread wide again for Robinson offside. Well, that's a yellow card for John Robinson. It was a daft thing to do. It was a daft thing to do. You know what's going to happen if you kick the ball away. You're going to get a booking. They're the frustrating things for managers yeah. and coaches. When a player does that, uh, you know, you just think he's going to end up with two points and they may add up. If he does that a couple of times a season, he might end up missing a game or two and it's just so unnecessary. It's frustration, really. And if he gets involved in an awful, awkward challenge now, it could be another yellow card, he could be off. It is so yes. senseless. Unnecessary. For sight. Poole playing it in towards Francis again. Francis does well there, not it down again. And Charlton were a full stretch there before Mortimer got it away. It's a Charlton uh, free kick, I think. I think Andy Edwards might be getting a yellow card now. I think he's got to, if the referee's going to give a free kick against him and it's a challenge from behind, he's got, he's got to give a book in in that instance. So a free kick to Charlton. There was the challenge by Andy Edwards on to Kim Grant. Like 18 minutes of the second half gone. Charlton subs today. I don't think I've given them to you. David White, Gary Nelson, and the goalkeeper Micah Mann. Gary Nelson, if he comes on, will be making his 600th league appearance. Oh yeah. Took a bang on the head there from Bowen unintentional but pretty painful by the look of it he really came skating back there to get that ball though and the referee saying well if you want some treatment you'll have to go off Lee Bowyer but the 19 year old is going to soldier on the referee's done well there have none of that nonsense and uh, you know you get up and play on or you get off Gary Nelson doing some warming up I was noticing uh, Les Reed and Alan Kerbishley having a little chat there as you probably saw yourself uh, David I wonder if they are thinking do we substitute would you at this point or what I personally wouldn't I think they're doing well Jolton I think they're containing Birmingham fairly well uh, I'd be reluctant to alter it because I think the team is doing quite well but you'd be wanting your subs to be warmed up in case uh, you're thinking of uh, you know put, putting somebody on a little bit later with just fresh legs bearing in mind that White and Nelson are more forward players and uh, Robinson and Newton are doing worldwide so there's no problems there it's whether you're happy with uh, Lieburn and Grant and I think they're both doing quite well at the moment I mean, sometimes with substitutions, the unknown factor is whether a player's got a little knock and you know at half-time and yes. you're watching where other people don't realise that. Up goes Lieburn. Doesn't collect. Neither does Kim Grant. Poole gets it away. Mortimer now. Not wide for Jamie Stewart. Curling it in towards Grant, but he didn't get there. Cooper got it away for Birmingham. Up to Francis now. Bowen. Oh, into uh, Gary Bull. Mortimer battling. Mustn't give away a penalty there. My goodness. Give away a corner, though. These are important times for Cholton. The, the first 10 minutes or so, 12, you know, 12 or 10 minutes was no great problem to them, but uh, Birmingham have stuffed up the pressure a bit. They're getting crosses in and uh, they're getting a bit of movement now and uh, they survive this sort of 5 or 10 minutes, then uh, it puts uh, increasing pressure on Birmingham. Well, Francis will be the target again. He's going for this one. Good catch.
It'll be a Birmingham throw. Here's Gary Poole. Down the line for Gary Bull. Poole. And now Priest. Bowen. Priest. The hustling going on there from Robinson, but they still got the ball through to Cooper and now to Donoa. Donoa trying to turn inside. Humphrey succeeds in doing so. That was Rufus with the clearance, and an important one as well, but it hasn't gone into touch. Donoa lifting it into the box again. Salmon coming for this one, getting his fist to it. Bowen trying to duck it back in there again, and uh, Forsyth was right in there. The ball still hasn't gone out of play. Still with Birmingham City. Cooper with the cross. Charlton needing to reform now. Poole with the cross this time, and put behind by Farmer. As we said, this is uh, anxious moments for Cholton. They're defending well. Uh, they're getting players back. I mean, when they had the break just now, now uh, Bowie, Robinson and Newton and even Kimbra all worked very hard to get back and get goal side. Halfway through the second half. And a goal kick. Leeburn. Daesh getting it away. It's those towards those few empty seats there, but not that many empty seats here. Good crowd here today at St Andrews. 18,538 for this visit of Charlton Athletic. Daesh gets it away. That's going to be a corner. So a corner for Charlton. Rufus is staying back this time. Just sending Barmer forward. But Lieburn is always going to be the main target. Yes, I think they look to hit Lieburn and uh, the same with uh, Birmingham look for Francis. So it's not no surprise those two are marking one another. Lieburn trying to get away, but Daesh getting the ball in. Humphrey knocked in once again and Lieburn's right in there they've got another one and Charlton go 4-1 up what do you make of that? Well, we said it was uh, possible Cholton might get a fourth one when we discussed it, but it was a good goal. Uh, John Humphrey did very well from the clearance of the corner and got the ball out to Paul Baltimore. He hits a good cross in here that's testing the defence, and Carl Lieben gets himself in between the players and puts the ball away excellently. A good goal. A brave bit of striking, actually, there, because he's, ob he's, he's obviously taken a pretty hefty old bang on the head there from the boot. You could probably see it there. That's right, he's put himself in there, and uh, I think he's caught, is it, uh, Daish's boot there? The cross comes over, he's just got the wrong side, and Francis, oh, it's Francis who's there, and uh, he's put it away bravely. I was saying earlier on in the game that it's 12 games, I think, since Carl Lieben scored, and he was due one, and he's now produced it, and Charlton are 4-1 up. Well, we said we felt there was one or two more goals to come and uh, I still wouldn't be surprised if another one's av available before the finish. I think that's very likely. It's up to Bull now for Birmingham. Donovan on the far side. And uh, Humphrey putting it behind. 
It was interesting that uh, Humphrey did well to set up that goal because uh, Cholton were having a corner and Birmingham left two out and uh, Humphrey read the ball that was knocked out and robbed the Birmingham player from getting the ball and swept it straight back to Mortimer. Here comes the corner. Birmingham needs something here, but they're not going to get it. It's a goal kick. And there's still 20 minutes to go. Let me just tell you, the crowd are filtering out in quite large numbers. The Birmingham fans are up and away with still 20 minutes of the game left. Humphrey. Forsyth, Donora, they that started so brightly, so promisingly for Birmingham. Who knows, it might still finish, you never know in this funny old game, but they've got a corner here. A corner for Birmingham, Priest will take it. Andy Edwards getting forward, Liam Daesh getting forward, Carl Levern's gone back to look after Francis. And it was Daesh who had his shot cleared off the line by John Humphrey, I think it was. Priest again. Oh, Mike Salmon wasn't sure just for a moment whether that was a back pass or whether it wasn't, and uh, was at one point going to pick it up and then quietly and quickly changed his mind. Here's Bowen. For Cooper. Oh, Cooper's gone past Humphrey. It's a deep cross there towards Francis, just too high even for him. And Robinson would be able to bring the ball away. Francis is after him, it's with Carl Lieburn. Down the line it goes to Lee Boyer. Charlton leading 4-1. And back it goes to Paul Sansom. And it'll be throw. Let's, let's have a word with Alan Kerbishley, Matt Lorenzo's with him. Barring a first minute penalty, Alan, uh, everything's gone pretty well today. Well, yeah, I mean, that knocks us back really, but uh, we was having a right go at half time, to be fair, because we didn't think we played at all. You know, we've played a lot better than this and not got any points away from home or drawn. And I still don't think we've played as well as we can, but obviously we're in a favourable position now, and uh, let's hope we can hold on because it'll be a fantastic picture if we do. That's Thanks, Matt Lorenzo and Alan Kerbishley. That's going to be, I think, the goal kick, is it? No. Just kept it in play. In fact, it'll be a free kick. So he doesn't think they've been playing as well as they can. Well, I think managers are never quite satisfied, and Alan's right. They probably have played well away from home on occasions and kept the ball, but uh, I think they played very well today. Knocked in. Well, it's gone in there. Andy Edwards probably got the last touch. I probably should have kept my mouth shut. <laughs> so it's 4-2 now. The free kick was well worked. It was played to Gary Poole, who smashed the ball in. And uh, the marking's not as they'd want it to. And uh, Andy Edwards has managed to get the touch. You can see the ball's played back there. The marking's not as strong as it is. It's a deflection, actually. And it just falls to the uh, Birmingham player, who has an easy job of side fitting it in. So he scored for both sides. It's Cooper. Birmingham fans wonder if this can be another big comeback. About 14 minutes left. Grant chasing this one. Gary Nelson's coming on for Charlton. 
And it'll be Kim Grant who's coming off. Riley scored a super goal, Kim Grant. But really got Charlton on their way to put them into a 2-1 lead. And on comes the man now making his 600th league appearance. Gary Nelson. Whether Kim Grant had a little bit of a knock or a strain uh, carried over or whether it's just a you know, fresh pair of legs and a bit of experience in Gary Nelson, uh, it's probably a good time to make the change if, if it's necessary. Francis with a header. Rufus ooh, just got there. Biggest pardon, it was Mortimer. Daesh with the throw. And Birmingham know if they can nick another one, they're going to be right back in it then. Yeah, I think it may be a little bit late. I think they needed that second goal when it was 3-1 uh, to give them the chance. I mean, we've seen results. I think somebody like Peter Burrell won in 4-1 yesterday That's and, right. uh, with 15 minutes to go. So it's not impossible, but I think uh, Cholton are well organised and uh, they should be able to see the time out. And Bournemouth won it. It was Bournemouth, wasn't it? Yes, yeah. Bournemouth. Yeah. I think won 5-4. That's it? right. Nelson. About 12 to go. Francis wins it. Chase is on. Donna was there. Ball trying to get in on the far side. Good work again by Jamie Stewart. Andy Edwards playing it in. But the flag is up. It's a free kick to Charlton. Charlton taking their time to get across there and uh, get the game going again. Stuart Balmer, I think it is, who's going to take it. <laughs> Lee Burns, long legs, do the business again. Nelson just fractionally offside. Again, banging it clear. Mortimer. Leeburn. Strength holding off uh, Andy Edwards. Finds Newton. Bit of respite now from a lot of defending. Now they can spring into the Birmingham City half of the field. Boya being uh, pursued by Priest. Humphrey. 10 minutes of the game left now. Bowyer again. Charlton keeping possession and doing it well. Looking for that final killer pass. And uh, Leeburn couldn't keep the thing going there. Charlton fans were looking, hopefully, towards the referee for something there. But nothing was forthcoming. Humphrey. Bowen, who's looked lively since he came on at half-time. Francis down the line again for Jason Bowen. Gary Bulls in the middle. Donna was there too. Cooper will play it in early probably. Well, here it is with David Priest playing along the line there for Forsyth. It's a goal! It's 4-3! Well, this is an amazing game now. Falling up to 4-3 now. 
if you see Forsyth strikes out sweetly and uh, Salmon has no chance, I mean, I was just about to say that Cholton want to take the sting out of the game and uh, they'll be looking to do that. And uh, uh, Birmingham have got themselves right back into it. It was good play by Bowen, as you rightly said, it caused a few problems. And uh, it was good play between him, Cooper and Phillips and, uh, sorry, Priest. And Priest set up uh, Forsyth nicely for shot. So we're here for a vital ten minutes, I think. Exactly, something like eight left plus whatever the referee decides to add on, but this really is going, as they say, to the wire. Up towards Lieber. They claim handball there against Gary Nelson, and it's been given. It's a free kick to Birmingham City. That ball's going to be hit towards the Charlton penalty area again. And Birmingham believe this is a game that can be saved now. Andy Edwards with it. Hit high towards big Kevin Francis. This is a real test of Charlton's resolve now. So how do they take the sting out of the game you were talking about, David? Well, I think they were going to slow it down and to, to make sure they keep the ball and pass the ball to another. They had done that quite well for a moment uh, down there and sort of allow uh, Birmingham not to get at them. Because I think Birmingham are going to throw bodies forward, they're going to throw the ball forward quickly, they're going to hit long into the box for Francis and look for knockdowns and uh, surround the ball. And Cholton have got to sort of withstand that pressure and then when they get the ball they've got to be prepared to play themselves out. Flag up for an offside, free kick to Charlton. She is a big fellow, isn't he? Yes, he's a handful. Mike Salmon with the free kick for Charlton. And the steward wants to get the ball back quickly from two Birmingham hands. Not out of play yet. Bull keeping it in play. And I wonder if all those Birmingham fans who were flocking out of the stadium when the score was 4-1, just what their thoughts are now if they're listening on their radios and they're hearing that it's 4-3. And who knows, they might miss one of the great comebacks of all time. Every Charlton fan will hope not, but uh, it's still anybody's game. One's got to give credit to Cholton for, uh, for coming back for their setback early in the game. And uh, to quite honestly, Birmingham looked like they were struggling. Uh, when they went 4-1 down after half-time, they had a little spell. And they've shown character to come back. They have indeed. All adds up to very good entertainment for our fans at home. They certainly can't complain with the entertainment value in the goals. That's a nice little touch by Bowyer. Sean Newton, always badly caught there. Bowen has made a tremendous difference. And Newton stuck to his job well there, but he's uh, got a free kick for Charlton. Oh, the Charlton fans say pick on somebody your own size, but <laughs> it'll be difficult, wouldn't it? It's a free kick for Charlton. New. Another throw for Charlton. This is where Charlton oh. are trying to take the sting out of the Absolutely. game now. The free kicks, they're not giving the ball away, they're taking their time, they're keeping the ball, trying to win it back. So I, mean, I think the referee will add a few minutes on, so it can be a you know, double-edged thing because if you're not careful, the referee can add a bit more extra time if right. he thinks you're taking liberties. Five minutes left. Charlton leading 4-3. Having once built up a lead of 4-1. Mortimer. Ooh, on striding past that challenge. No foul. Nelson's coming back to uh, retrieve possession. Birmingham would be anxious to get hold of the ball now and get it forward and to put Bur uh, Cholton under pressure in the box. Here come Birmingham again. Donovan hitting it long. Rufus holding it up for Charlton. Bowyer trying to get in there, but Francis head and shoulders above him. 
Forsyth, who scored that tremendous third goal for Birmingham. The captain, Liam Desch, playing it in there. Mortimer hasn't done badly today. Well, I think most of the Charlton players have done quite well. I mean, Alan said they can do better, but uh, I think they, they played quite well. I mean, he'd be a bit disappointed with a couple of the goals he conceded late, but up until that time, I think they've been very professional and worked very hard. About three and a half minutes left. Cooper. Rufus and Humphrey between then Humphrey gives it away Priest turns it back in again but it's safe in the arms of Mike Salmon and the man of the match named for ITV by I think it's John Sillett doing it for us today Lee Bowyer with that there, no, are plenty, there are plenty you go alongside him though I think uh, Lee Bowie would be the first to admit that Priest with a throw a little over two minutes left Stewart first to show, when he's given it straight back to Priest, that wasn't the best ball to play. Bull playing it in, knocked down almost calmly there by the Charlton defence, and uh, Paul Mortimer banging it away into the Birmingham half. Two minutes to go. Three precious points, just a minute or two away now for Charlton. And they go away from here, so happy with three, not so happy now with one. 4-3 the score to Charlton. Daesh to Cooper. Newton coming across, does really well, dispossesses the fullback, and now Charlton are in full flight. Nelson's in the middle and Lee Burns in the middle as well. Will it come to Carl Lee Burns? No, it won't. A minute to go. Harry Nelson just kept in play and cunning enough now to take his time. Plays a simple ball back to the fullback, John Humphrey. Hit long to the far side, they keep possession, take a bit more time. It's going to be a free kick to Birmingham. The last 30 seconds, plus whatever time referee Phil Richards adds on at the end of a really first-class game of football in the Ensley First Division. Nicely played there by Boyer for Robinson. Robinson happy to take it down to the corner flag. It'll be a Birmingham throw. We're now playing time added on at the end of 90 minutes. Donovan stopped by Stewart. Well, certainly it's been an entertaining game, good value, and uh, both sets of players have given it all. The referees allowed it to be competitive, and... Uh, you know, good top of the table battle. Dish, and it's not over yet, as they hit it long again towards Kevin Francis, he knocks it down! Oh! And Forsyth! No, oh, he's well offside, he's well offside! Relax, you Charlton fans at home, disallowed. But it was a terrific knockdown by Francis, and... Uh, yes, Forsyth. the last one was right, it was... Uh, We've got that one right. We've now played a minute of added time added on.
Good jump by Daesh. Birmingham looking for one last flow of the dice. Francis battling away. Poyer's getting in there. Man of the match knocks it back to Mike Salmon. Oh, that wasn't a very good clearance. Goes into touch. Birmingham get possession again. Gary Cooper with it. Still the referee will not blow that final whistle. Knocking the ball in again to Big Francis once again. And this time it's Robinson with the clearance. That's an interesting point whether the referee he's done well to tell Cooper because he could have let him take it and then uh, uh, incensed everybody by telling him he's in, uh, taking the throw in the wrong place. Got to stop the cross coming. This is Priest. Still Charlton on the back foot. Still hanging on to this lead. And Mike Salmon gathering the ball calmly in the circumstances above the head of the mighty Kevin Francis. What amazes me, Brian, is a lot of football is talked to, but when the uh, uh, team's losing, everybody goes to that up and under and get it in the box and the English way, they call it, but it's, it can be an effective way to put teams under pressure. Birmingham certainly doing that at the moment, but no longer. The final whistle has gone. A brilliant victory then for Charlton. The first time they've won here at St Andrews since 1938-39. And a victory that now puts them second in the Ensley First Division behind Derby County. After such an unpromising start. And they conceded that penalty in the first minute. And... Uh, and then the own goal by Andy Edwards, Robinson, Grant, Lieburn, and then Edwards and Forsyth coming back for Birmingham City. Wonderful entertainment. And three priceless points then for Charlton Athletic. Alan Kerbishley at the moment congratulating players on both sides, but delighted, no doubt, with the work of his own team. He's now with Lee Boyer. We're hoping to get a word with Alan in just a moment. So a 4-3 victory then for Charlton Athletic. And let's see if we can go downstairs now and get a word with uh, the man of the match, Lee Bowyer, and hopefully with uh, Alan Kirby. There's Lee Bowyer. One stage, Lee, uh, it looks as though that was going to be a, an easy win for you, 4-1, uh, but it didn't prove that way in the end. No, they just played route one in the end, just got us pinned us back. It's a tough going towards the end, it's uh, tiring me there. They brought three fresh new legs on in the end, like second half, but it's a tough game. It was uh, exciting, uh, it was exhausting to watch. What was it like to play in? Oh, it was end to end really, because like, when we broke, like, no one really stayed with us and we just kept breaking and going on, so they was cheating really. So, it was hard. All right, I think your manager's got uh, well, a little no, present no, for you. Alan, you man of the match award. Uh, Alan, no, no, just briefly, uh, no, no, at 4-1, it looked all right, didn't it? At 4-3, uh, a bit of a relief. Well, you know, as I said to you before, you know, just before the end there, I didn't think the game was over because we weren't playing particularly well. And as Lee just said, they was putting the ball in the box so much, something was going to give. And, you know, you're winning 4-1, it's 4-2, and then panic sets in. And I've got a lot of young lads out there who are learning in this atmosphere. And uh, Lee will be the first to admit, I mean, he's played 30-odd games. And he's played at Wolves, and he's played at Millwall, and he's played at Birmingham, and he's big games. And they're learning in the first team, along with Sean and Richard and the others. And, uh, you know, they come under a little bit of pressure, but I'm pleased they came out of it. Because it's all a learning process for us all. All right, Alan, Lee, yeah, thank Lee. you very much. Much well done, Sam. Well done indeed. Uh, thank you very much, Matt. To those young men did Charlton proud this afternoon. We have plenty of action and talking points still to come on the Sunday match. Ray Lewington, the Palace coach, is with us, and he gives his verdict on that terrific match at St Andrews. We have highlights in this afternoon's other first division games, Sunderland against Norwich from Roker Park, all the local goals from the second and third divisions as well. And we review the Coca-Cola Cup quarter-finals and ask, was Newcastle's David Ginola hard done by at Highbury? Yellow Sunday match. Terrific game up there at St Andrews with Charlton winning by four goals to three. Ray Lewington, you tipped them at the start, but that uh, young team, average age 24, they did uh, every Charlton fan proud up there. Oh, I think it's a great result. It's a very difficult place to go, Birmingham. Uh, they 
you know, had that come under a lot of pressure late on in the game. And although they, they sat a little bit deep, because we've done that five times this year. That's the tendency, up. isn't it? Yeah, you sit a little bit deep, but they've rolled their sleeves up, and uh, I think they deserved it. We expected a Birmingham onslaught mm. early in the second half. It didn't come, and when Carl Lieben made it for them with a very brave header, it, it looked game, set and match, didn't it? Yeah, I've got to say, I was a little bit surprised. They, they come out a little bit slow, but uh, Charlton's really first attack is a great ball in by Paul Mortimer, and that is a really brave header. He'd just been kicked in the head, and uh, to dive amongst the boots in there, that, that was a terrific goal. Mm. Andy Edwards punched uh, the Charlton goal in, he got a yellow card and he made amends here. For yeah, Birmingham. you see the Charlton boys are still looking away from the ball there, they get caught a little bit flat-footed, they get the benefit of a deflection, but uh, you know, he's moving and the Charlton defenders are not, and uh, Alan will be a little bit upset with that when he sees that again. I think so, and for Scythe, we thought had a good goal disallowed in the first half, made no mistake here and made it 4-3. Yeah, cracking goal. Uh, not like you say, you could say that they didn't close down quick enough, but there are men moving towards it. But that goes in just in the right spot. Uh, you have got to take them on live uh, on this show in three weeks' time. Yeah, it should, should be very good. I hope that uh, there is a, yeah, as many goals. Obviously, we'd like to win 5-2, but uh, <laughs> it should be a good game. The results are terrific. Away win for Norwich with that goal from Ashley Ward. Norwich, who prefer playing away from Carrow Road with so many political troubles these days, and it moves them up into the top six up there in sixth place. And uh, as we've been saying, Charlton up there in second, back up to second place, uh, seven points behind Derby County, but um, with a game in hand. Uh, Ray, what do you make of the latest uh, look at the first division table? Oh, it's so tight. It goes, uh, you know, teams go up and down every week. You get enough leaders one week, next week they drop down to fourth or fifth. Mm. That's a great win by Norwich, though. They've still got a chance. How significant? Both teams have won away. I do feel that uh, a lot of sides this year found it difficult to, to win at home. I don't know why, um, but there are, there are a lot of sides in our division with uh, good away records and, and poor home records. Mm. I mean, I mean there, must, there must be some reason for it. I mean, is it the greater freedom? You're not expected so much when you go away from home? Well, perhaps, but I think, that, uh, in, I think there are a lot of young sides about who get very tense at home, and I think that, that's probably the problem with most teams. On uh, March 4th, London Derby, it is between Charlton and uh, the Palace, February the 4th, I should say, going a month ahead of my time. OK, top marks for sheer entertainment. Charlton wobbled early and late. An excellent away win, though. Charlton, genuine contenders for the Premiership. You better believe it. Bye-bye. <laughs>